In this video, I'm going to talk about bringing your animated environment into Premiere and using effects control to create the motion tweens. Um, so I'm going to go over to Premiere. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new sequence. And the sequence setting that we're using is the XDCAM HD422. I open that up. I'm using the 1080p. Open that up and then I'm using the 30 frames per second. I'm going to go ahead and save that as a preset by switching over to settings and then going down to save preset. I'll give this a name so I can find it when I come back to new sequence. And then it will um, it will update the available presets, and at the bottom you will see um, that new preset available. And while you're working within this project, you'll be able to um, use that preset for any subsequent sequences. Now, what's important about creating the new sequence is that is the size of the stage for my video when I output it. If I don't create a new sequence and I use a previous method, I'm going to end up with a stage that's the full size of the uh, drawing that I've built in Photoshop, which is going to be way too wide. So the idea is that I have the stage and then I have the scenery, which is much longer, that's going to move behind the stage. So now that I have that sequence, I'm going to go ahead and import my Photoshop file. And when I import it, I'm going to need to make sure that I don't accidentally flatten it or flatten portions of it. So I'm going to do individual layers, uh, make sure that all the layers are selected. And I'm going to include the layer called uh, Do Not Touch, which is my blank white background. If you are using the separate files, um, then you'll import, when you import one of those files, you'll just import the white background in that. Um, the size of it doesn't matter as long as it covers the screen area. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. OK. Now, I want to make sure that this, this sequence is what I see in my timeline. And I'm going to open up my images. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my do not touch background and place it over onto the timeline. So I'm going to pull the do not touch over onto my timeline here. And once I do that, I'll see that it updates with a white background here. Then I am not going to need my audio layers. So I'm going to drag down the bar in between V1 and A1. And then I'm going to grab each layer starting from the bottom. And it may take a couple of minutes to update. There we go. It's very faint here. You can see I double clicked on it in the project window and it showed up in the, um, in the source preview. So now I've got layers 7, 6, 5, 4. And when you run out of layers on the um, timeline, you can simply pull it out and place it at the top, and it'll create a new layer. And my machine's a little bit slow, so it's going to take a minute or two to update that. Then the next thing I'm going to want to do is switch over to my effects control. And if ever you can't find a window, like this effects control here is a little bit hidden, I can always access it through the Windows menu and locate effects control and it'll pull it up to the front. Now in order for effects control to work, I'm going to need to have a, um, uh, an image selected. And to be extra safe, I'm going to go ahead and lock all of my other layers. 
and uh, it may be helpful for you to also turn off the visibility on the other layers. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on. So now I'm going to double click on the source video until I see the blue bounding box show up. Um, and that is my entire uh, foreground. And before I do anything, I'm going to decide uh, which way I want this to move. Do I want it to start over on this side and then slowly move to the left, or do I want to start on the other side and slowly move to the right? I'm going to start on the left-hand side and move it um, to the left. So I'm going to pull this over, and to keep it from um, pushing up or down and getting unaligned, as I start dragging it, I'm then going to hold down Shift on the keyboard to constrain the up-down movement. And you want to be careful to start moving it first, and then put your hand on the, on the Shift key, and to make sure to let go of the trackpad or mouse or pen first before you let go of Shift. Um, if you let go of Shift first, then it may, um, it may end up moving up a little bit or down a little bit. Let me just give it a little push. If it does this, before you've put keyframes in, you can safely go back to position and I can type in 540, which is half of my 1080 height. Um, once I've put keyframes in, then you need to be very careful about correcting this number, making sure that you are actually um, on a keyframe on the timeline. Uh, okay, so next I'm going to do my motion tween. want to pay careful attention to the playhead. This is the playhead here. It's what moves me back and forth on the timeline and it appears um, on wherever there is a um, timeline in the program. So I have a timeline on my actual timeline. I also have a timeline in my preview window and I have a timeline in effects control. Um, as I move this playhead it will um, it will mirror and uh, go to the same location in all of the other timelines. The timeline that I'm concerned with is this particular section here in effects control. So to start my motion tween, that means I'm going to go between the beginning of this timeline and the end. And all I'm going to do is provide Premiere with a set of instructions saying at this point on the timeline, I want this image to be in this location. Then I'm going to move it um, several seconds later, and I'm going to say at this point in the timeline, I want to move it to a different position. And the motion tween is Premiere finding the in-between. So if you're going from point A to point B, in between point A and point B, it's going to move from one side to the other. So that's the tween of motion, being the motion in between two points. Okay, so now when I'm at the beginning of my timeline, I'm going to place my first keyframe by uh, under motion. If this is not opened already, I'm going to open that up until I see the options. And under position, I'm going to click on this toggle animation, which looks like a, an old-fashioned stopwatch, which means start. So that starts the process, and it inserts a keyframe here. Once it starts the process, and it inserts the keyframe, now we have these options here, which are the options to add more keyframes or remove keyframes, and the options to move between keyframes, in other words, to fast forward between keyframes. So on this keyframe, I've already set my position to the left-hand side. So now what I want to do is move the playhead to the end, or the next location where I want to move my object. So I'm going to go all the way to the end, and it always goes one one frame passed into full black. Then I'm going to use the arrow key on my keyboard to go back one frame. Now, um, at this point, I'm going to add a second keyframe. This 
this second keyframe, um, now my preview is taking a minute to update. This second keyframe, I'm going to give it a set of instructions to move the foreground all the way to the other side, and then the timeline will figure out um, the motion in between. So once I'm on this keyframe, um, once my preview finishes updating, I'm going to slide the blue box all the way to the other end until the right-hand side lines up with the right-hand side of the, um, of the frame. Now in some cases you're going to have um, layers, like I do on my second layer here, which are going to be this staircase here is going to be a little bit shorter than my background. That's what changes the speed at which it moves. These particular staircases belong to this guideline. So the first guideline out here, this is the, um, the closest foreground. The next guideline is the boundary of the second foreground. And then the third one is the middle ground, and so on and so on until you get to the second to last guide. The inner guide is an indication of your stage area. So the smallest background layer that you're going to have is one out from that. So if I go back to this staircase, if I turn off the visibility on my guides, which I can do on the view menu, or I can do by holding down command uh, semicolon, I want to know that this is my start point. So I'm going to put in a line so that I'm going to be able to see that start point when I get into Premiere. So I'm going to choose a black foreground and brush, and I'm going to choose a very small line um, like to about two points. I'll make mine a little bit bigger so that you can see it. And at 100% hardness. I'm then going to click to start drawing around my line, hold down shift, and do my second click. Then when I turn the guide off, you can see the line here. Then I'm going to do that on the other side. Click, hold down shift, and click. And then, very important, I'm going to make sure to save this. Even if you think you've already saved it, save it again. Only once it's saved, if I have imported it into Premiere, then when I come back to Premiere, it'll show me the, um, the updated image, so I don't have to re-import those lines.